Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. What is going on? Okay, so here is your market update. And we're going to be talking about something that is going to impact Bitcoin in the near future. So if you are new to the channel, be sure to like and subscribe at the end of the video. So let's roll with the flavor. Quote, JP Morgan is worried about who's going to buy all the bonds. Now, what do we mean by that? Why is, why has JP Morgan said this? What is the relevance to why JP Morgan has a concern about the bonds? Well, let me explain something to you. Who buys the bonds? Well, there are three players that pick up the bonds, ladies and gentlemen. Commercial banks, foreign governments, and of course, the Federal Reserve itself. Check this chart out. This chart shows the relationship between the purchases between commercial banks, foreign officials, and the Fed itself. You can see that all three are at the lows, and they have been low for quite some time, and that is a cause for concern. Why? Because the nature of the bonds market is that it's a great investment for those looking for safety and a fixed rate of interest that is paid semi-annually until the bonds maturity. So imagine you're a hedge fund manager and you want to diversify your, ex your exposure. You might put 25% of your capital in equities, foreign exchange might be another 25%, and you might put 50% of your capital into bonds. The reason why you would put it into bonds is because it guarantees safety and a fixed rate of interest that is paid semi-annually until the bonds maturity, okay? So the reason you would put most of your capital into bonds is because the fluctuations between Forex and equities is high. So you would, in essence, offset that fluctuation and drawdown by the returns you generate on the bonds. Now, if foreign players are not picking up treasury bonds from the U.S. government and commercial banks in the U.S. are not also picking it up and the Federal Reserve itself isn't picking it up, what's that going to do? Well, we know that the reason why they're not picking it up is because of the hawkish stance that is present with the Fed. The Fed has a goal of getting inflation down to 2%. The Fed, or should I say, Jerome Powell has been a bit clear on the idea that he will force the economy into a bit of a problem to achieve that goal of inflation. Now, we know where everyone is putting their money, ladies and gentlemen, and that is evident with the dominance of the dollar. Now, forget the dominance of the dollar in the last few days, ladies and gentlemen. You need to look at the dominance of the dollar on the daily time frame. And you can see bright as day that although the dominance of the dollar started to pull back for the past one, two, three, four days itself, that's not enough for us to grant the idea that the dollar dominance is now starting to break down. It's just not enough. Dollar dominance would need to actually invalidate the 104 mark for us to be consistent with the idea that they're getting ready to roll over. And that's quite a far distance, ladies and gentlemen. Now, we can look at the charts themselves and say to ourselves, OK, look, let's just look at what's going on in the yields. The yields are pulling back, but they have been rising nonstop since July, ladies and gentlemen. Actually, tell a lie. They've been rising all the way since, what, 21st, 20, 2020? Like June, July, look at that. They have just been rising up nonstop, ladies and gentlemen, and it hasn't stopped, and it doesn't look like it even wants to stop. They're calling for the yields to peak. If the yields can peak, then that would welcome the market to start bringing in capital. That would mean investors would start putting more into equities and into um, Forex, and then, of course, maybe reduce their bond purchases. But the problem that we've got is bond purchases have actually slowed down across the board. That is a problem. Okay. Now, word on the street says, ladies and gentlemen, that in relation to the Fed's approach in controlling inflation, most of it is going to rely on the idea of news that is coming out this week. Jolt's job openings happening tomorrow. We've got the ADP non-farm employment change and the ISM services PMI. They saw a contraction, but it, was below, it wasn't below 50. It was at 50.9, which means that things are, seem to be okay. They're on level ground. So these purchasing managers are somewhat conservative 
with employment, production, new orders, prices and supply deliveries and inventories. OK, you can see over the last few months that we haven't actually gone down below 50. OK, so that's a good sign that economically speaking, things are OK in the manufacturing sector. OK. Now, listen, what does that do for Bitcoin? And I will say it to you again, ladies and gentlemen. In order for you to understand Bitcoin in moving up, you have to understand what legacy money is doing. If legacy money is not turning to the bonds, that means they're turning to other investments for safety. And that would be dollar. Now, dollar's taking a little bit of a nosedive and consolidating and moving down. Welcome it. Take advantage of it. That means assets against the US dollar are going up. But we know that the Fed's going to be increasing the interest rates yet again. We know that they want to get that policy or inflation goal down to 2%. It was only at 9 not so long ago. And now it seems like it looks like it's peaked out. But some of the analysts in Wall Street are talking about that this is what usually happens. You might see inflation dro uh, drop, which will give you an indication that everyone's like, OK, everything is good. Inflation's coming down. Let's start buying. And then you see these mini rallies happening in assets across the board. So if you then start looking at NASDAQ, you can see NASDAQ is taking a beautiful move to the upside. Nice little W formation structure right there. Shift to the upside. OK. S&P doing exactly the same thing, ladies and gentlemen. Beautiful price action. But they are warning. And saying that these moves right here, potentially profit taking, people feeling optimistic, but we've got ourselves a little bit of a situation given that, yes, there are vector candles nearby in the S&P, and we've also got vector candles to the upside on the S&P. In other words, a relief rally will need the following. If the S&P and the NASDAQ can trade positively for four days in a row, then on the fourth day, we would be expecting a follow through. Now, these are the principles taken from William J. O'Neill's concept on the cancelling method, which is an acronym on how to understand the, the health of a stock. OK. Now, there's also pattern structures that they use as well, like cut with handle principle and whatnot. But fundamentally, if the money's not coming into the stock market, that means that assets across the board or equities are not receiving commitment from institutional funds. OK, so if we go over to MarketSmith to understand how the day has fared off. All right. You can see right here that volume for Nasdaq is up 5.74 percent and we've got ourselves an accumulation day at 2.83 percent. All right. Dow Jones is up 3%, and of course, the S&P is up 3%. This is an accumulation day. There are 1,218 stocks up on volume, but there are only 53 stocks down on volume. We are now approaching the fourth quarter earnings season coming up, ladies and gentlemen. So that's going to be a very important time in the marketplace, okay? Companies are now going to be declaring their profits, and the outlook is going to be reflected in the likeliness of the S&P going up or down. Because remember, the S&P is made up of a basket of assets, a basket of equities, the same as the NASDAQ, okay? Now, going into Bitcoin, ladies and gentlemen, today has been a little bit of a mad day today. You can see that Bitcoin has broken out and made that great move to the upside. We've got vector candle recovery right here, and they broke away from the psychological range. We just had ourselves a little bit of a stop hunt low and snap back up to shake out the retail traders who have been going long inside of this area here. But like I said to you, ladies and gentlemen, Bitcoin has been doing this, and the results haven't been great from it either. For every pump that has happened in Bitcoin, has led to Bitcoin dropping down, okay? Until Bitcoin breaks the 800 EMA on the one hour time frame, you should only be taking advantage of longs if you are trading on smaller time frames. For example, go over to the five minute or the one minute time frame. Principally, you'd be looking for the following. Rise, retrace, continuation. These are the structures that you look for in the chart. 
Notice how price broke out of this region right here. Yesterday's high comes down and tests the psychological high and the 50 EMA confluence. Yippee-ki-yay to the upside, ladies and gentlemen. You would be principally placing your orders inside of this zone right here. Because Mr. Market Maker wants to give the illusion of traders being able to buy the dip. He shook out all the retail traders down below who went long in this area, hit their liquidation points, but he knew that he was getting an influx of traders coming in. So he facilitated that obligation and then allowed himself to build more shorts at the highest possible point. Now, if you notice in the chart right here, this is where retail is stepping in. And then Mr. Market Maker comes in, surprises the guys and hits their liquidation points and fully recovers that green vector candle in that range. And now we've got ourselves the first aspect of whether the proof of this move to the upside is going to be sustained. Okay. Now we're going into Asia later on, ladies and gentlemen. We've got ourselves in principle an hour and a half until Sydney opens, which will be setting us up for Asia. Okay. So if you are in profit, pay yourselves because the market will be here tomorrow. I hope that vi this video helps you out, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry for the little boomer moments in throughout the video. But I do hope that it serves and brings you into the understanding of the bigger picture. Because if the three main players of treasury purchases are not actually buying the treasuries, that means they are picking up something else. That means that the dominance of the dollar itself may be consolidating and preparing for another attempt to the upside. And that is only on the basis that the Fed is in, on purpose going to put the economy into what they call a recession so that they can achieve their overall inflation target of 2%. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are new to the channel, be sure to like and subscribe. And I will be checking in with you beautiful people tomorrow for the New York live stream. Take care of yourself, pattern watchers. Mad love. Peace.